I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList. Today is July 12, 2024, and in this video I'm going to answer a question which someone sent to me in which I will show you how to alter a 3D file in OpenSCAD. Okay, first some links. So I'll put a link to this in my show notes. So here's a square pot that I put up years ago, uh, which I actually des designed in Fusion 360, and I did a video on it showing how to do it, I think. It's been a long time. So someone put a question here just the other day. It says, don't want to drain... Oh, and the person here is... I hope I'm not messing up your name, but I think it's Dry Den Skater Mom. I hope I'm right. If I'm not, correct me. Uh, but it, sounds, it says, don't want to drain a hole. How can we fix that? So I made this potted plant, of course. I thought I should put a drain hole in it, and um, I did. But so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go fix it with OpenSCAD. I'm not going to go... It, it was done in Fusion 360, but I'm not going to go back in Fusion 360 and fix it. I'm going to fix it in OpenSCAD just to show you how to do that. I'll post what I make so anyone can download the, the one without a hole now, but without a drain hole. But I thought it's also a good idea to go over how you can fix a model on OpenSCAD so you can actually download things and tweak them just a little bit to your liking. So with that, let's go do it. Okay, before we start, let's go over some of the gotchas and show you all some of the initial code so you can understand what I'm doing here. So the first thing, of course, is to download the file in this case. And so the original file I have here is square underscore pot dot STL. And I put that in a folder. And the next thing I do is once you start doing OpenSCAD, we're going to import something. The one thing you don't want to do, well, to make sure you're covering your bases, just make the file and save that file in the same folder. Because what I'm doing is I'm going to reference the STL file. And if the SCAD, OpenSCAD file doesn't know where it's, it is itself, it can't say, it can't look next to it and find the, op, and find the STL file. So kind of make an outline of a file real quick, save it in the same folder, just so you don't um, get a little off track and confused. Okay, but now that I have that file there, what we're going to do is we'll go over a couple little things that, I, that I've been doing recently, and just kind of how I'm doing my design in OpenSCAD. The first one is this FN variable. So the dollar sign $FN variable is kind of how you can set how detailed you are. So I can say it, come in here and say FN equals 6. And if I did that, that's a really low detail. And if I said 100, that's a little higher, or even higher is a higher number. More detail takes more time. Also, this preview variable, this dollar sign preview, that will be true when I click the preview button. And it will not be true when I do the render button. So I do have this thing where I basically say, hey, if you're doing a preview, uh, only use a detail level of 30. It's, it's actually facets, but you can think of it like detail level. But if you're going to render it, do a really big number, 600, which is overkill. That way my renders are faster and my, my, my previews are faster. My renders take a little bit longer, but they do a good job. Um, another thing is I, if you, especially if you're importing files, it's probably a good idea to get a nightly build. Uh, the old, uh, the most recent uh, build out, I shouldn't say build, the most recent uh, OpenSCAD out there um, has issues importing STL files. So the current build I am using, I'll just show this real quick. Let's say I go to about, I am using the one from 6.04.2024. So that one seems to be working pretty well for me. If you get a nightly build, um, be careful. Well, I should be careful. It's not the end of the world. But you might, if you get the latest one today, they're always tweaking the code. So if you get one today, it may have issues because maybe someone deployed something not quite right. And if you do, you could go back to this one. I've been having good luck with it. Or, or you could go to one two days later, and it might work just fine. So until they do a final release, um, some days may be good, some days may be bad. But this one, for me, works pretty well. Um, boom, boom, boom. And I use it, like I said, because importing files uh, can be a little tricky. It's kind of a hit or miss. So with that, another thing I do is I use this preview file to do as a filter. So here I say, if it's, if it's well, let me remove that not for a second. If I'm doing preview, I do this section. If not, I do this section. And then also I make a module for everything. So here's a square pot, no drain. That's my module I'm going to use. And what I do with a preview typically is what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a difference where I put a cube in there that bifurcates the model. So if I run this in preview, you'll see it. I bifurcate the model, and that kind of helps me to kind of dig in and see things. I think it's very useful. Then if I do a full render, it puts it all back in. So that's the thing I, I do a lot. And if all of a sudden I change my mind and I really want to see everything, I can do, do an exclamation point in front of that preview, which negates the logic. And then if I do a preview, It'll show everything. If I do a render, it'll do the half. So, okay, so there's the basics, kind of where I'm at. Um, and then one more thing before we get into the, into, the, into the deep code. Let's import it. So what I'll do is I'll say, I'll make a variable called original underscore pot. 
and I'll set it to that STL file name, square underscore pot dot STL. And then what I do here is I'll import it. So I'll import that variable name right there and give it a convexity of three and that'll import it. And then I had to move it just a little bit to kind of center it. So I did 20, 20 and that turns out that kind of centers it. I want it centered because that helps me when I'm doing my mathematical logic. And that imported it. And as you can see, it's important just fine. So from there, we need to do some tweaks. So now let's get into the actual code to try to fix it. Okay, code, code, code. So you can see as I bifurcate it, you can see the couple of the problems. There's this drain hole right here. We need to want to remove that. But also one thing I did when I designed this, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's a little bit of a slope because I thought back in the day, it's like, hey, if we're going to drain stuff off, we want it to slope down. And actually it slopes down, actually slopes, it slopes down both ways. So if I recall correctly, the way I designed it, this is the lowest point, and over back here would be the highest point. And I also put this little weird nook over here. So it's a little bit peculiar, but it worked. Um, but now we, gotta, we wanna remove all that. So luckily this is a square shape, so it's pretty easy to fix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in two cubes, one to fill up that space and a little bit more because we need to fill up this. We also want to fill up this uh, angle because if there's, if there's no drain, the bottom can be flat, right? So we'll fill that up plus a little more and then we'll come up and use another cube to remove from the space so we go down a little further. So what I'll do is I'll do this. Now, in fact, let me, let me start raw. I already have the code here. I can just make it work, but let me start raw. So we'll just start, we'll start very, very raw. So the first thing I'll do, because I want to see what I'm doing, is I'll do color. So I'll say color red, just so it stands out. It's very clear what I'm doing. And we'll do translate, because we're going to need to translate it. But at first, I won't move it very much. I'll do 0x, 0y, and 0z, so we're not going to do it really effectively move it. Move it. And then I'll do a cube. And do, 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 and then we'll do, well, well, we'll show a few things. I can do a cube of 40, just an example. Not what I really want, but if I do a cube of 40, you can see it just pops in there. And I'm bifurcating, right? So you'll see it got cut in half. If I undo that, you can see it's kind of hanging out down there. So the next thing I want to do, um, I really don't want it there. So what I want to do to make life easy, because you can see I really want this square centered over here. So halves on this side, halves on that side. I can use uh, this little thing where I can say center equals true. So if it's any cube, I can set the cube size, comma, center equals true, and then it will center it right around the very, very center there, which of course brings it a little bit too low, but then I want to bring it up. So if I really was to do a cube of 40, I would come over here and say 20 to bring it back up and make it flat on the bottom. Boom. Um, not exactly what we want, but you can see the idea. So the next thing we're going to do is we actually don't want a cube of exactly 40. So I'll, I'll do everything here. So we did 40, 40, 40. That would give us a cube because we're, you know, width, length, that, height. Okay. But now I'm going to fiddle. So even in my brain, I'm not thinking straight where everything is. So I'll just make this a 140 to make sure where, my, where I am. Okay. So 140 is our X going out there, right? But you can see... That's too long. I want it to just get barely over here. So we'll just tweak it real quick. We'll say 100. Okay, that's within parameters. But I want it just barely. So we'll say 110 to see if we can poke out. 120. Ah, there you go. 120 barely pokes out. Okay, so that's probably about, you know, 120 will probably get me there. So we'll say 119. All right, so that gets me a little bit inside. Just give us a little safety. Uh, and the next thing we can see, we're probably a little too high. I want it to just barely be underneath this ridge. I think that will work for what we're doing. So then we'll say the height, uh, 80. In fact, I could do a variable here. I could say, you know, height equals 40. And then I could say height divided by two, just to make my life simpler. So I don't have to change one variable. And you see, we're a little too tall there. So we'll say, we'll go ridiculous. 10, I think is too small. Yep. We'll go 20. There you go. 20 is a little too high. Drop it down to 18. Okay. Drop down to 15. Probably a little too low. No, 15. 15 is probably about right. And if I look over here, I can see it is going into that little section over there. So 15 is probably a pretty good number. 
But then I need this width here, so we'll adjust the width. Say 80. Well, we should. It's, it's square. 119 should probably work, right? So 119 gets us there. Well, almost. Almost. In this case, we really want to fill up that little space right to the very edge. So we probably want to do 120. Yeah, and you can see that gives us... Sometimes when you hit like right on the edge, you get this kind of funky viewer, and it kind of looks a little funky, but I think we're right there. So I'll do a full render to make sure we're, we're right there. Okay, so a full render. I don't see it popping out there. I think that did it. So kudos to us. We're doing pretty good. Now that might be enough. Um, but in this case, I thought it might be a good idea to, now that we filled that up, to dig down a little bit. So we've probably gone a little bit too much, but we only want to dig down exactly a square. So we need to make a cube that's exactly the width and length of this and a little bit of a different height. So we'll make another cube, but we'll make the color blue. Blue. Boom. And uh, we'll just copy. We'll copy this logic. You know, copy and paste, save some time. But the height on this one, well, it can be as high. Well, we don't. We're going to move it around. We'll move it around. We actually don't need that. So we'll exaggerate because we don't... It's going to be above, so we'll just make it 40. And now you'll see this blue guy is way up here. Oh. We'll make that 40. Okay. But you can see it's bigger than what we want. So now we're going to reduce this. So we'll make it uh, 100 and 100 to see where we're at with that. Okay, we're getting there. Let me say 80. Oh, I bet you we're too thin now. Too short. Okay, so between 100 and 80, we're somewhere in there. So we'll say... We'll say 90. I bet you we're 90. Probably. We'll say 89. Yep, so you just got a little crack there, so I think we're 90. So we'll do 90 and 90. And there we go. But now we want to actually cut this one down. It's a little too high. So we will... Well, we can we can render it now. So we can see... We can see what we're cutting. So what we'll do is we'll do a difference here. And basically what a difference will do is it takes the first object, which in this case is the bottom red cube, and then every object after it that's within the difference brackets will be removed from it. So in this case, we only have one object, so this will be removed, but they don't intersect, so actually nothing will happen except for this blue one will disappear, because it says take the red one, remove the blue one from it where they intersect, but they don't intersect yet. So if we do that, nothing happens, except for the blue one goes away. But watch, we'll try to we'll lower it bit by bit. So we'll lower it down to 30, which we might be just kissing it right there. Yep, and you see we it, we're doing that. So let's lower it to 25. And you see it went down some more. Ah, but now we got a problem. As we lowered it, oh, we lowered it too much. Let's just lower it too much. Because you can see we got the slope back. We went too far. But if we wanted to go too far, well, we'll, we'll talk about that. So we'll go 30. 30 is probably a good number. There we go. Do a full render. And there we go. We're done. Now we've got the full box. But let's say... Um, let's show one more trick. I, I'm going to save it like this, save it like this, and render it, because I think that's what I want. That's what we want, and that's what I'll post. But if you want to do something else, let's go show you how to do another trick, just in case. Okay, let's see if I can fiddle with this idea. So right now, I mean, I like this, but let's say you actually wanted to change it even more and go a little deep. You want to remove that, but also go a little deeper. Okay, there's an issue. So let's say we drop this down to... 10 will make it really thin, right? If I drop that down to 10, I am removing that object from that object. But, so I, I take the red, I remove the blue from it, and then what's left fills in. But now what I've got is this blue does not remove, um, it doesn't remove the old STL file. So we got an issue. So we actually have to remove from the old STL file. See so if I go... See if I come out the STL file. So what can we do? Well, I think we should be able to remove from those files. If I'm, if this works, there's two ways of doing it. I am importing a file, so I think now this should work. 
This should work. I could take make a difference up here. And I could just copy that blue up here, just make a duplicate, right? Go up here and remove that blue from that as well. So it's like re double section. Oh, and we're Oh, we're centered. Uh, yeah, we're centered, so I went too far deep. I went too far down. But the idea works. Let's go 15. Oh, if we go 20, we're right on the edge. 20, we're right on the edge. So what we want to do is go 25. So it'll be really thin. And there you go, super thin. So there you go, that worked. And if I do, if I render the whole way, oh, not export. If I render the whole way, you can see we've got it, just really thin. But the problem with doing that, eh, not a huge problem, but I've, I've uh, broken what's called the dry principle in coding. Don't repeat yourself. So this and this are the exact same. And we kind of don't want to do that. So what we can do is we can keep this difference here, because this is, this is the guy we want to subtract. We want to subtract from both of them. So what we can do is come in here and make a union. So we can say union. And what occurs is anything within a union get joined together as one piece. And so I can take that red piece, copy, paste it within there. I'll select all of this and just tab over, tab over to make it clean. And I'll come down here and comment this out so this no longer exists. And we should get, there we go, perfect. We get the exact result, results we want. Because if I did comment that out, so we just have it a union basically. We get just the red there. And they're one piece and we remove the blue. Boom. There we go. Yay, perfect. Uh in fact let me reverse the preview logic so we get a nice rendered half piece. Yeah. There you go. So there's how you do that. Nice to learn. Okay, so there you go. Have fun. Oh, and I will take this and post it and put a show notes, links in the show notes to the actual pot that, that's done, and I'll, and I'll also respond to the person that asked, so they don't have to do what I just did, but they can just go download the finished product. Um, but it's also good to learn some of this stuff. I love OpenSCAD uh, for designing some things, but also I really love it where you can, t it's, if you're doing some geometric shapes, it's, it's nice to take an existing um, object and tweak it a little bit. Very good, very good. Okay. Enough of that. We had a great homeschool conference about a month ago. My kids helped work the booth this year, and man, were we busy. We were at a new venue this year, and we had a new location for our booth, and I think it worked out really well for us. We were able to see a lot of homeschoolers and educate a lot of folks on the wonderful world of 3D printing and why they need one, -on -one for their homeschool. And every year we hear back from them, and every year more and more people, folks, are telling us they have one, two, or even three printers at home. So word's getting out and homeschoolers are getting better tools and opportunities for learning. If you're not subscribed, subscribe for more, and never be clueless again!